am Ser Maithan o. Once upon a time. Once upon a time, a prince was fishing down at the seashore. Checking his net, he found a little bundle of skins. He lifted it up, pulled the skins back, and there he found a tiny little baby, fast asleep. A baby? The baby opened its eyes, grey-green like the sea. There was such a light coming out of that baby's head. The whole child seemed to be shining. Taliesin, you must be the golden shining one. Taliesin. The baby smiled. Enuda, Taliesin. I like that name. The prince nearly dropped the child in surprise. How can you speak when you are so little, so tiny? Oh, I can speak, said the baby. I am the best storyteller in the world. A story or a god I, and a bead. Then you are worth a whole sea full of salmon to me, said the prince, and he gathered the baby up and very, very gently carried him home to the castle of his father, King Gwythnor Garanhir. And when he was there, he put the child, the baby, on the bardic chair and gathered all the people round and said, I have found a storyteller. Listen. And when everyone had gathered, the baby told a story. And this is the story the baby Taliesin told. I'm Sir Maithanor. Once upon a time, there was a wise, wise woman and her name was Kerid Wen. Blessed. Loved one, Kerid Wen. Kerid Wen was wise. She knew what lies at the heart of the mountains, what lies under the deepest of seas, the names of the stars, where they were going and why. She could make potions and lotions from the herbs and the plants that grew along the lakeside Lintegid where she lived. She knew which, har which would harm and which would heal. Now Kerid Wen, the loved, blessed one, had two children, Kreiroi, her daughter, as beautiful as a summer's day, Moran, her son, as ugly as the coldest winter night. Being a mother, she worried for both her children, but she worried most for her son Moran. People could not bear to look at him, turned their faces away from him. I will give you a gift, she said to her baby son. The gift of inspiration. You will be a storyteller. and People will love you for your words. It was a long and hard job to brew the gift of inspiration, even for someone as wise as Keridwen. It would take a year. She had a cauldron made. She hung it on a hook over a fire. She filled it with waters from the sacred lake Lintegid. And then she lit the fire and looked for some help. In order to make the potion of Awen of inspiration, she would need to cook for a year and a day. Hmm. She found an old blind man and a young farm boy. And the young farm boy's name was Guyonbach. And between the two of them, their job would be to keep the fire going. Never, never let the fire go out for a year and a day. And she collect all the ingredients for a potion to make her boy a storyteller. They began in the winter time. The fire lit. The water began to bubble. She went out into the world looking for the beauty of winter. And she found scarlet holly berries so bright prickly holly leaves that never fall, never lose their green. Icicles. A cold wind. A hoot of an owl at night. Ooh -hoo. She gathered them all, put them into the potion, stirred it around and around. Make my son the best storyteller in the world, a story of God I in a beat. To the baby she said, you will know such stories. And the old man and the boy from the farm, Guyambach, 
They worked hard and they kept the fire going and the potion bubbling. All through the winter they worked until winter turned as it does to spring. And then Karit Wang, the loved blessed one, went out into the world to collect all the beauty of spring. Delicate snowdrops, shy violets, golden daffodils, the song of a blackbird, the seven colours of a rainbow. Rain. She put them into the cauldron, she stirred around and around, make my son the best storyteller in the world, a story of God I and a bee. I cannot wait to hear your stories. Three drops on your tongue and you will know all of them. You will be loved. And the old man and the young boy, Guillaume Bach, they kept that fire going until spring turned as it does to summer. And then Kirit Wen, the loved blessed one, she went out into the summer to collect all the beauties of summer. Blossom from the May blossom from the apple, wild strawberries, zzz, honey from the bees, golden wheat from the fields. She put them into that cauldron and they began to cook. And she stirred it around and around, make my son the best storyteller in the world, a story of God I and a beat. Give him the gift of inspiration. Give him the gift of Awen. You will have Awen. The old man and the young boy Guyan Bach, they kept the fire going until summer turned as it does into autumn. And then Kerry Dwen went out into the world and collected all the beauty of autumn. Shining conkers, acorns, hazelnuts, apples. All the colours of autumn she gathered in her basket, put into the potion, stirred it round and around. Make my son the best storyteller in the world. A story of God I un bead. Such a gift I'm brewing for you. And all the time the old man and the young boy Guillaume Bach, they worked. Until the potion was almost ready. A year and a day almost up. Kerit Wen, the loved blessed one, tired after her long labours, closed her eyes and slept for a little bit. And Morfran, the little baby, slept too. And the old man, Mordo, dozed by the fire. Only Guion Bach was awake. He looked into the potion and it began to bubble. Blip, 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 blip. Blip, 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 blip. He thought he could see strange, wondrous shapes in the mist and steam and waters that were bubbling. Blip, 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 blip. So he, he leaned over a little bit more and suddenly, ow! The potion spat, boiling hot liquid on his finger and he put his finger into his mouth and... Um, um, um. He swallowed the magic three drops. And as he did so, his heart and his head felt like they would burst, for he knew all the stories that ever there have been or will be are. Ah, he felt he would crack with all the inspiration in him. And that's just what the cauldron did, its work done. <laughs> And everything left in that cauldron turned to poison. It's magic work done. The sound of the cauldron cracking woke Kerit Wen. She looked at the boy, the farm boy, Guillaume Bach. What's he waiting for? Nate? Said him out. He did not come. He ran as fast as his legs could carry him out of that place. And he ran 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 and when she saw what he had done she ran after him. She ran too 
and she ran and he ran and she ran and he ran. You've never seen such a chase as Mother Carit went chasing that Queen Bach uphill, downhill, through the muddy fields, through the woods, down by the river. And he ran until the breath was going out of his body, until his legs were like jelly, till his breath was racket in his throat and his burning and he thought I can't run anymore I wish I was a better runner than this I wish I could run like those hares on the mountains on a bounty and squad knock ding his ears grew long his paws legs grew short he was covered in brown hair he was a hare and he ran as fast as hares can for he was one and in that running and bounding and leaping, he knew all the stories and the songs of hares. All their knowledge was his. When she saw what he had done, she could not let him get away. Get it when she turned herself into a hare chaser. A milgi, a greyhound bitch. And she ran. And they ran and they ran and they ran and they ran and they ran. And she chased him and she turned him and she trapped him. With his back to the river, the little boy in the hair was caught. Or maybe. On a bounty and a yacht. He leapt away from her, his fur turned silver scaly and he was a salmon. He leapt through the river, waters up and down, swimming and diving and leaping and splashing away from her. And in all that swimming, the boy and the salmon knew all the knowledge, all the songs and the stories of salmon. And when she saw what he had done, she could not let him get away. She turned herself into a salmon chaser, Dorgi. She turned herself into an otter. And her powerful otter limbs reached out for him, swing, swimming and swimming and chasing and running and chasing and swimming. She reached and she reached and the little boy and the fish thought she will catch me unless he turned his fish's eyes up to the sky and the sky seemed to him limitless. On a bounty and a daring bach, the fins became wings and he flew up, up, up into that sky and as he flew all the songs and the stories of the birds they were his when she saw what he had done she turned herself into a little bird chaser a hawk and two three beats of her wings the shadow of her was over him and he knew he could not run from her he could not swim from her he could not fly from her the only chance to hide. He looked down, 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 far below with his bird's eye he saw a farmyard and scattered over the farmyard thousands and thousands and thousands of tiny grains of wheat. And a bounty and head in Bach. He got smaller and smaller and smaller and turned into the true kernel of himself, a tiny little seed. The boy in the sea knew all the songs and stories of the growing green life. He was one amongst thousands and thousands of brother and sister grains of wheat. She'll never catch me now. When she saw what he had done, she turned herself into a seed swallower. A black hen. And one of those tiny seeds was shining. She opened her beak, peck, and swallowed it down. And as woman, Karedwen returned home to care for her children, Kreiri and Modoran. In her belly, the boy in the seed dreamed. On a bounty and babi eto. On a bounty and vavi eto. He was a baby again. And for nine long months he swam in the seas of his mother's belly until she gave birth. And she knew who it was she'd given birth to. You little thief. You stole the potion that was meant for Maud Ran. You took it away from him. 
She hated him. She loved him too. He was the most beautiful thing she had ever made. The boy who had been a hare. A salmon. A bird. A seed. Twice born. Twice born storyteller. But she could not look after him. She could not care for him. She was too mad with him. In the end, she made a little boat out of skins and she put him on the river. Whoosh. And the baby floated down the river until it came to the sea and was caught in a net. And found one May morning. And that, said the baby, the baby Taliesin, and the chair in the castle of Gwydno Granhir. And that is when the Prince Elfin found me. But when they heard that story, everyone agreed it was the best story they'd ever heard. And they cheered. And Taliesin, he stayed at that court and grew up to be the most famous storyteller in Wales. When she saw what she had done, Keritwen accepted. Accepted and was pleased. The blessed loved one, Keritwen, knew that as long as the stories of Taliesin were told, her name would always be remembered. For when Taliesin sang, he sang, I am Taliesin, I was born and then I died and I was born again, I was swallowed by the black hen, what she gave me I can never repay, what she gave me I will always praise, care it when. So Taliesin the baby was found on May morning. Rhiannon came riding on her white horse one May morning long ago. And Thomas met the Queen of Elfin Land. <laughs>